our manners. You're supposed to have the best of them. Why? Because we don't know the importance of this day. We don't know what this day represents. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, and Abi Huraira, radiallahu an, fi ma rawahu Muslim, qal al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khayru yawmin tala'at alayhi shams, yawmul jum'ah, the best, the best day that the sun has risen upon is Friday, Yom al Jum'ah, where he mentioned, Fihi khuliqa Adam alayhi salam. On that day, Adam alayhi salam was created. Wa fihi udkhil al Jannah. And on that day, he was entered into Jannah. Wa fihi ukhrija minha. And on that day, he was taken out of Jannah. Wa ju'ila khalifatan fil ard. And he was made a leader on the earth on that day, Yom al Jum'ah. It has a number of virtues. And he mentioned, Wala taqumu sa'a illa fi Yom al Jum'ah. And it's only on Yom al Jum'ah, on a Friday like this, that the final hour will be established. So it has significance. And it has mannerisms that we have been taught to adorn ourselves with. In significance of this day. Also, of the virtues that's mentioned also by Abi Huraira, Radlahu An. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Man tawadda'a fa ahsan al wudu, thumma at al jum'a, fa dana wa stama' wa ansata, ghufila lahu ma bainahu wa bain al jum'ati, wa ziyada tu thalasati ayyam, wa man masa al hasa fa kal laha, rawahu tirmidi, wa bin maja. It mentions regarding this situation, the one who makes wudu, I, they purify themselves for this day, and they perfect their purification. And when they come to the masjid, they come close. They go close towards the imam, and they listen, and they are quiet, they listen attentively. Some of us, we come and we go straight to the back. Why? Because we're thinking about the dunya still. How quick can I get out? Or oh, I stay on the first floor. How quick can I escape the masjid? I need to get back to work. I need to make more money. When the most reward is here. The most reward is in the front of the masjid. The most reward is close to the imam. Where are you running to? Here is your salvation where there is reward. We are in need of this. None of us are safe. None of us have been promised Jannah. But we behave like we have been. We don't need to take these opportunities to get more reward. We're okay. Our situation is fine. But it also mentioned the significance of this time. Man masal hasa faqad laha. Wa masal hasa, as they mentioned. The Prophet Muhammad Sassam mentioned, you're allowed to wipe the place of prayer once for the, any smooth stones, to move the stones away. Even this is engaging with that which is not befitting at this time. فَقَدْ لَغَى During that time. Don't distract yourself. How many of us, the phone rings, we answer in the khutbah. We're sending text messages in the khutbah. All of this will have you nullify your, ro your reward. Your khutmah may be authentic. Yes, it's sahih. However, the reward is gone. Why? Because you're busy yourself talking. You're communicating on the phone. You're checking your notifications. You're worrying about what's going to happen straight after the khutbah. Where am I going? As for what you're supposed to be here for, our mind is elsewhere. Our mind is elsewhere. Many of us, we're far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan is ahead of us. But it's not only one month you get close to Allah azza wa jal. This is a time that we're supposed to get close to Allah. As it mentioned, and we have mentioned this before, of the hadith, al juma al juma of the things that is an expiation of that which comes in between, as long as a person avoids the major sins. But we get comfortable, I pray it's okay, I'm okay. La. The only time we're okay is when we take the first step into Jannah. Until then, there's no guarantee. 
We need to acknowledge the times that we are in and seize those opportunities to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it mentioned, the one who does these things perfects their purification. They come early, they're close to the Imam, they listen attentively. Their sins will be forgiven from that which is between this Jummah and the next one with an addition of three days. Isn't Allah SWT the most merciful? A simple task, come and benefit for a short period of time. Worship Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah will forgive you. Allah will forgive your sins. The opportunities that Allah gives us to wipe our slate clean, to gain closeness to Him. But some of us, we are negligent. Some of us, we are unmindful. So we do not seize these opportunities. But there are also manners that a person should adorn themselves with. From them is making sure you smell nice. Making sure your appearance is pleasant. As it came in the hadith, and Salman al-Farisi, radiallahu an, قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, لا يختصر رجل يوم الجمعة ويتطهر ما استطاع من تهر ويدهن من دهنه ويمس من طيب بيته ثم يخرج فلا يفرق بين اثنين ثم يصلي ما كتب له ثم ينصت إذا تكلم الإمام إلا غفر له ما بينه وبين الجمعة الأخرى البخاري It mentioned in this hadith that the Prophet Muhammad says I mentioned the one who they make ghusl for Jummah. اختلف العلماء بين الوجوب والاستحباب. There are difference of those who say it's an obligation and those who say it's recommended. Wallahu a'lam that it's recommended is most apparent. That a person is recommended to take ghusl in preparation for Yom al Jummah. And also, cream yourself, oil your skin, make yourself pleasant. Don't come to the masjid with flaky skin unprepared, looking disheveled. This is not praiseworthy. This does not show your righteous by looking poor and dressing poor and wearing smelly clothes to the masjid. La. Don't follow the ways of the extreme people of Tasawwuf. I think it's one outfit is righteousness. La. The Prophet Muhammad Sassam taught us to have a separate garment for Jum'ah, for Yom al Jum'ah alone. Separate from the clothes you work in. Why? Giving significance to this day. But a person should also wear from the perfume that they have in their home. Have perfume as a man, not for women. For women, it's not permissible to wear perfume outside your house. And don't fool yourself by saying, I put a little bit under my jilbab. No one can smell it. Who told you that? Who told you that? You become accustomed to the smell. You can't smell it. But this is haram. Do not leave your home wearing perfume. As for the men, wear perfume. Beautify yourself. Adorn yourself for the masajid. For the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I mention the one who comes to the masjid. لا يفرق بين اثنين do not climb over the shoulders of the people. Don't split between two individuals. If you're late, go to the back. Don't try and come to the front. You're late. You don't deserve that place. You don't deserve it. So do not harm the people, as we'll come to mention. So the one who does this, their sins again, will be forgiven between Jummah to the next one. Another opportunity to gain reward and have your sins forgiven. And when we mention forgiveness of sins, we are referring to the minor sins. As for the major sins, then a person is required to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> also, regarding beautifying yourself when coming to the masajid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, Ya Bani Adam, khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. O oh, children of Adam, beautify yourself for every masjid, every place of worship, adorn yourself. Come well presented. 
Showing that you realize that you're coming to stand before Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't wear shabby clothes. Don't wear dishonorable clothes. Show the signs of a Muslim. Beautify yourself on this day with the clothes that are most beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal. And as it came in the hadith Um Salama, the most beloved clothing to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the thawb. <coughs> Not a tracksuit. So one should adorn yourself for this day. If you cannot wear it often, wear it for the salah at least. Wear a thawb for the salah at least. Beautify yourself for the prayer at least. Just to give it some significance. This is how we should be as Muslims. Acknowledging these times that are beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal. As it came in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu an, أنه سمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ما على أحدكم إن وجد أو إن وجدتم أن يتخذ ثوبين ليوم الجمعة سوى ثوبي مهنته ابن ماجه. He mentioned in this hadith that it's upon a person if they have the ability, or if they have the means. To take two separate garments other than that which they would wear for work. Specifically for Yom al -Jumma. Don't wear your everyday clothes for Yom al -Jumma. Beautify yourself for this day. Wear a thobe. Wear the best of clothing. Things that look pleasant and presentable. That people know why you're dressed like this. Why have you beautified yourself? Why have you made sure your beard looks tidy and, and pleasant? And yet stop shaving the beard. Stop it. Stop looking like women. We are men. It's haram. Stop looking like women and shaving the beard. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, leave the beard and trim the moustache. But we're doing it the opposite way round now. We're leaving the moustache looking like a big umbrella and no beard. What is this? Where's the honor of men? And I'm not being soft. If you're upset, I'm talking to you. Grow your beard. Because this is Zinatul Rijal. And all of my messages, Min Kaba'ir al It's for major sins to shave the beard. So again, we are to be of those who are proud of Islam. Proud of the signs of a man. The signs of a woman within Islam. Stop being persuaded by Western ideology. Take honor in what Allah has honored you with. Allah has honored us with Islam. And as soon as we leave Islam and the things Allah has honored us with, we become the lowest of the people. We will become the lowest of the people. And we wonder why the state of the Muslims are weak. It's because we've lived, lived, left off that which Allah has given us strength with. We've left off that which Allah has honored us with. So now we imitate those who are of the lowly people. And even if you are oppressed for a time in this life, Al-Izzah, Al-Izzah Yawm Al-Qiyamah, you will see the honor and the victory on the Day of Judgment when they are the last ones to have the laugh. It's us, the believers, who will laugh last. They laugh at you now. They ridicule you now. But who will laugh last when we are granted Jannah? And we recline on the furniture of Jannah, looking at the fruits of Jannah, that which Allah has promised us in Jannah. Why? Because we made short-term sacrifice now. We didn't follow these people in this life. We made short-term sacrifice in seeking what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of the things that one should also bear in mind when it comes to Yawm al Jum'ah, come early to the masjid. For the reward is great. As the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned, as narrated by Abu Hurairah in Sahih Bukhari, قَالَ مَنْ اِقْتَسَلَ يَوْمَ الْجُمْعَةِ غَسْلُ الْجَنَابَ ثُمَّ رَاحَ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَرَّبَ بَدَنَةً وَمَنْ رَاحَ فِي السَّاعَةِ الثَّانِيَةِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَرَّبَ بَقَرَ الْحَدِيثِ The point of the hadith that mentions the one who performs ghusl in the morning Ghusl al Janaba. For those who are married, it's from the Sunnah to have relations with your family before Jum'ah. Early. And you come, you make ghusl from this. Yes, this is a practice from the Sunnah. 
But when, when a person comes early to the masjid, it's as if they have offered in sacrifice a big she camel. That's the reward that you will get. And the one who is in the next, the next hour of that time, and he comes after this, it's as if they have sacrificed a cow for the sake of Allah. And they mention the situation from a cow to a sheep with horns to a chicken and to an egg. I, the earlier you come for Yawm al Jumu'ah, the reward is great. And then once the Imam comes to the member, the Malaika, they'll come and also listen to the reminder. So the recording of those who enter has stopped. You are late. But the reward is greater for those who come early. أقول قولي ما تسمعون أستغفر الله فاستغفر فإنه غفور رحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد as we mentioned there are some manners regarding how a person should be in their approach to this blessed day, Yom al Jumma. But there are also mannerisms that we've alluded to. Mannerisms that are expected from us as Muslims whilst the khutbah is going on. And from them is as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu mentioned, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila stawa ala al minbari istakbalnahu bi wujuhina. He mentioned, if the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was standing straight on the member, then we would face him, we would turn towards him. And this is not only during the khutbah, but also in the circles of knowledge, that one should try and face the teacher, face the one who is giving the reminder. This is the way of the Muslims. This is a way a person shows attentiveness. One is less likely to be distracted then. So again, these are the ways of the companions. They said we would face him with our faces. We would turn towards the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whilst he was delivering the khutbah. And also mentioned by Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, idha qulta li sahibik yawm al-jum'ati ansit wal imam yakhtub faqad lagawt. If you say to the person next to you, be quiet and listen, whilst the imam is given the khutbah, then you have fallen into that which is not befitting. And you're trying to do something good. So imagine the one who's talking is worse. The one who's being a, a distraction is worse than the one who's telling you to be quiet. And they're both wrong. They are both wrong. So one, when the khutbah is happening, one should be listening attentively, not being distracted, not looking at their friends, not giving no signs, not sending messages, not answering phone calls. This is the worst that has come to now, that people answer phone calls, some even in the salah. You answer the call and you let the people hear that you're praying. Turn the phone off. <laughs> Separate yourself from everything outside of the salah. When you come to the masjid, it's a place of dhikr, a place of remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal, a place of worship. Remove the distractions. Remove it. Don't even read Quran from your phone. Read from the Mus'haf. Eliminate all distractions. How many times the person, I'm going to go to the masjid today, I want to read this part of the Quran. As soon as they go, they just start talking to someone. They didn't read nothing of the Quran. They open the phone, I'm going to read Quran from my phone. Notification, come. Nothing of the Quran. Remove the distractions. Because if we're not doing this from now, don't think all of a sudden Ramadan comes, you become the ideal Muslim. Just because Ramadan comes, we become the ideal Muslim. No. It takes effort. It takes a habit that a person makes them accustomed. Make themselves accustomed to this lifestyle by making it your normal practice. That you read the Quran daily. You have your will, your daily portion of the Quran that you recite. You take time to remember Allah Azza wa Jal. The morning and the evening. Things that will benefit you. It doesn't benefit Allah Azza wa Jal. None of these actions we do benefit Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah has no need for it. Rather the benefit is going to come back to us. And also of the thing that's mentioned. 
When it comes to a person feeling sleepy during the khutbah, yes, the Prophet has even taught us this. As I mentioned, Ali bin Umar, radiallahu anhuma, qala, sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqool, idha na'asa ahadakum wa huwa fil masjid, fal yatahawwal min majlisihi, dhalik ila ghayrihi. Rawahu al-Tirmidhi. He mentioned, if a person is in the masjid, so it's not even specific to the khutbah alone, and you start to feel sleepy during a reminder, during a lesson, then you are to move places. You are to get up and move to a different place. Some of Ahl Ilm even say to go and make wudu, go and wash your face. You are to move and remove this from yourself. Because it's only shaitan who comes to make you tired during the times of remembrance. It's not because you're tired. You would have slept so long and you come to a circle of knowledge. You start to fall asleep. This is from shaitan. So when you find this happening to you, as we have been guided by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, move places, move places. Take these means because, as we said, this Friday khutbah for some is their only opportunity to hear one thing that may make them from the people of Jannah, just to get one reminder that might encourage them to make necessary changes. Because some of us, this is the only time we hear anything of Islamic knowledge. Just during the khutbah. Other than this, we waste our time. The young people on TikTok. Young people busy with TikTok, wasting their time. Wasting their time, ruining their marriages because they spend time <laughs> watching everyone else. And they don't actually live their own life. Ruining their whole life, wasting time on TikTok. TikTok is there to waste your time. And that's what we're doing, wasting our time with social media. When imagine, I can listen to Quran, it will affect my heart. I can read tafsir, I can learn to get ways closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. Ways to increase my iman. But instead, I look at everything that will plummet my iman, that will destroy my iman. Send it to the ground. And I wonder why my dua is not answered. I wonder why I'm being tested with X, Y, Z, and I'm uncomfortable. This is the things we bring upon ourselves. So as we mentioned, this is a day that is very significant in Islam and it's upon us to learn the importance of this day and let that manifest in our actions and our statements. And as I've mentioned before, after the khutbah, after the salah, give the path its rights. Stop blocking the path. If you want to gather, as I've mentioned, you gather on the other side of the road, it's spacious. But don't make it difficult for people, because this is not permissible. Everything has, give, has been given rights within Islam, and the Muslims need to be the first to uphold them. Don't let a kafir remind you to clear the pathway. Don't let a non-Muslim remind you to pick up rubbish off the floor. Don't let a non-Muslim remind you how you should behave in social places. This is not befitting for us as Muslims. So as we learn, there are manners for Yawm al Jum'ah. Ah. There are manners for our day-to-day -day life that we as Muslims need to learn and be at the forefront of upholding them. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal for tawfiq. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adabana wa qimu salat.